All right. So while that video was processing, I went through and demonstrated how you can create all of that for yourself. But it's already done for you if you load the action, which is in our, our class Dropbox into Photoshop. And you load an action just by opening actions and say, load actions. So when I do that, I can find the one I just downloaded. And the one we're using is my, you know, my name and then color separations. And then when you open it, you'll get this folder. You want to open up that folder and then you click on CMYK full run and then you press play. That will turn any RGB image, flattened or not flattened, into this kind of file. It's called a CMYK combined dot layer file. It has a white background and then it has each ink layer on its own. All right, now I'm going to take all these halftone inks. I'm going to put them in, I'm going to organize them into a group. And then I'm going to swing this down, go to my original poster, close all of these. I don't need them. I don't need to save them. But it needs to create all those components before you can have the combined one. And my actions, the ones with my name, are always protected. So they'll never overwrite your original file. They'll create a new file based on your original file. So be careful with actions because often they're destructive. You click the button and it changes everything. So you want to do it on a copy. Okay, I'm going to keep this open, but I'm also going to open my original PSD. All right, and then I'm going to move my original PSD into the main frame. Come on, help me out here. Get there, get there. Or if not, that's fine. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this whole group of the different half screens and drag and drop it onto my original poster. Now my halftone screen angle action is set at professional resolution at 300 pixels per inch, which is why this is a little bit smaller than this, right? And I actually like that because what happens when you upscale pixels, when you force them to be bigger by command T and transforming this, what is it having to do to those pixels? Yeah, it's forcing it to grow the resolution to make new pixels, right? So how does it do that? Well, it grows little pixels around the edges of them. So these are bitmap circles. That means they're only solid pixels of a color. When I grow them, that automatically just softens them a little bit. So now they look a lot nicer because they actually have these anti-aliased you know, softened edges around their printing. Just like they do if you actually print that ink for real. The middle of the dots is a little bit darker than the edges of the dots because the ink is only 75 to 80% opaque. And now they're all overlapped on top of my illustration. If I turn them off, looks like this. Turn them on, looks like this. And you can see that they're a little offset too. They go a little beyond the edge and they might not fit exactly which is exactly, it's called misregistration. And it's what happens in printing all the time. So if you're trying to mimic that retro effect, it's kind of the opposite of clean digital, right? You are dealing with all those issues right here. Now, the other thing I can do, and this is why I really like this action, is I can play with the layering of the inks. Now typically yellow goes on the bottom, black goes on the top. That's because yellow is the least flattering screen angle. You can see it here. It's at zero degrees or 90 degrees. I can also misregister or individually register each layer on its own. So I'm just playing with the yellow layer here and I can play with its opacity. So I can set it to be brighter to make it like real printing, like there's not a full digital colored image behind, I'd set them all about 75.
and then maybe set this down to 75, and you'll see how they overlap on each other. And then magenta, and then black, and black's at 100. So that's what it would look like printed. But what I'm doing is I'm playing with it so that it's actually... just overla overlapping on what I have already. And then I can take this group and I can play with the overall opacity and kind of sync it in. So it just adds a little something. And I can play with blending modes. So pin light is a nice one for this. So even if I take the opacity way up, you'll see it will only affect it where the overlaps don't quite match in very subtle ways. But I like that. It activates it. Especially for this content, it makes it look more like kind of a retro jittery toy. I can also make a duplicate of the group and then play with rasterizing it all or merging it all so it's all together and then just play with its hue saturation. And I can change the hue until it augments my, my coloring in a way I like. So I'm going to kind of really warm it up. Or cool it down. So that would be warmer if I want more of those golden yellows. Right. I can do that. And I can separate out. So my greens, I want my greens to go a different way. My cyans, I can really control it now because it's all about cyan, magenta, and yellow. <laughs> this is what they do in the print houses. So like adjust your, your, your colors until they match. It's called proofing. So if I want more magenta, more purple in my magentas, or more red in my magentas, I can get that. All right. So that makes me a little bit happier with this poster. And that was just using it for the spot illustration. So let me save that. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down. I don't need this effect anymore. You can see how, how lame the filter is compared to actually separating it out for real. Now what I'm going to do is hold down Option and go to Layer Merge Visible. So I'm doing the whole poster. Then I'm going to select all of that. Command A, Command C to copy it. File New. Paste it in. Right? And then I'm going to run the action on the whole poster. All right, so I go to Window, Actions. I find Carl Color Separations. I open it up. I go to CMYK Full Run. I select that VHS tape, and I hit Play. And I hit Don't Flatten. If you want to avoid this step, just flatten your copy before you run it. It doesn't really matter. But now I see how it would be printed in like a newspaper <laughs> back in the day. And now I can take all of that, put that into a folder, right? And then open up my original, move this folder onto it, close all these others. This is kind of the spirit of, of uh, experimentation. I want you guys to, to start having the curiosity, like the implications of all the stuff you can do with digital's ability to make perfect copies, right? And then I'm going to move that folder. And stretch it. Command T to fit. And it's okay if it's not exactly right. 
So I'm going for retro printing effects here. Hit return. And now, as a whole folder, I can adjust it with my arrow keys and line it up a little bit better. I can line up each individual layer. And then I can play with its opacity. But what I like is now it's affecting, you know, these blank solids as well, which will actually make them print a little bit better even on fine art printers. And it will give all of my edges just a little bit extra. Right? You can see all that printing, all that misregistration going on. Or, or I can change the blending mode so that it only affects it in these limited situations like pin light. So it's still very dark, but within those darks, there's still some variation. And I can always merge it and play with its color balance. So that's about as much as you can do, I think, for its hue saturation. And I can shift the tones until it's something I like. It's kind of simplifying it to a way you can understand it for yourself. And, and kind of work with the printing. And now this background looks so much cooler than it did without these halftones. You know, now it's got like the matrix in there of all the little dots that make the bigger dots and all this overlap, even in the deepest black. So that's my finished poster. Now I save that as a Photoshop file, right? It's big. If I look at the image size, it's 117 megabytes. It's a big file. So I'm going to save it now as a copy, as just a JPEG. I'm not going to do a screen grab. I'm going to do the full thing. And I'm going to do it about 10 up. I'm going to do it a little less than 10 because I don't want it to be too much more than 5 megabytes. So medium quality as a JPEG. And then I can post that. To the assignment, which is here. And so the big difference was that now I've added CMYK color separation. And where's my JPEG? It's here. And it's too big. Let's see how big it is. It's probably just because I put so much into this one message. So I'll do it as a reply. Yeah, it's five megabytes. It's the size I want, but I've done enough already into this message. So I'm going to, this is an extra. So I'm just going to do it as a reply with CMYK color separation. And I'm going to put as a reminder, know your screen angles. How can you know your angles? You can just look at those slides for my exhaustive explanation. If you're not able to store it that way, you can always attach it. And then when the computer is feeling more robust, it will be able to display it. This is why we name our work and organize it so we can find it. There it is. All right. So here, these are the halftone screen angles. This is also a worksheet on uh, links that you can download. And then it's also shown here. So black is 45, magenta is 75, cyan is 15, yellow is zero. It can be expressed a few different ways, but it, that's always the principle. So this has yellow as 90, and it has cyan as 105 instead of 